Hello, good morning, everyone, and welcome to a new webinar of Lab9 Pro. Today, the webinar is in English, not in Dutch or in French today, because we have some international speakers today, and that is Hakim and Chris from Extensis. I want to welcome you to this new webinar of Suitcase Extensis, where we're going to show you the all latest updates of Suitcase and Connect. The presentation today won't be uh, doing doing by myself. It's going to be uh, doing by Hakim and the demo by Chris. I just want to let you know that the re webinar is recorded today and will be available this afternoon on the YouTube channel of LabName Pro. During the webinar, if you have any questions, just put your question in the Q&A uh, panel uh, in Zoom, and then we can answer uh, those uh, questions live on the end of the webinar together with Hakim and Chris. So the introduction is done and I would give the words right now to Hakim. Hakim, the word is yours. Thank you. And uh, good morning, everyone. Hope you hear me clearly. Um, thank you again for uh, for joining. And a huge thanks to to um, to Zeno and Lab9 for, uh, for organizing this webinar. So we um, we had a lot of changes a lot of updates news and all that and we are very excited to share this with you um i will start um quickly talk a little bit about as you can see this is extensive as asset man management solution so during the last few years we 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 have been trying to improve a little bit our our workflow our features uh our solutions to the problems and um, we uh, released a few months ago a few updates related to 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 uh, to um, our solutions i will go through a few updates the key features the key change and then i will uh, let um, chris to do a demonstration so you can see how the solution works and what what we are offering in terms of of, uh, of features, um, and then we will leave to you um, the platform. If you have any questions, uh, we are very happy to 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 answer you. So, um, as you can see, uh, what we have been doing recently is really trying to be working, you know, working closely with with our clients. Uh, especially the creative clients trying to understand their problems and trying to solve their problems, especially that. So as you can see, the user is 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 in the middle of of um, um, or around a lot of elements, including, of course, fonts, content, images, pictures, templates, uh, designers, uh, especially the designers that sometimes they can cause uh, a little bit of problems. We, we are going to talk about that separately, but uh, also the creative director, all of these around the user to manage. Uh, and of course, we are asking him to bring a result, mixing all this and organizing all this uh, and be, 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 be ready to, to deliver, especially respecting the timeline, respecting the deadline um, and of course, the, the the quality of the work. The work need to be in a good in a good shape um, and ready to to be delivered. And this is this is also the creative director or the studio manager role, where he needs also to make sure that the user is comfortable with all these elements around him, and he can use all of these to deliver this to their end 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 customer or the 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 one who should expect expect the the final product so the creative space there is a lot of challenges including of course this is mixing of fonts assets they are around around the place sometimes they are in 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 um in hard drive somewhere sometimes they are on the machine there is of course a risk of of compliance uh wasting time wasting money a lot of this can cause serious problem to the user first and then to the business uh, generally. So the problem is, is simply we try to just highlight the bigger ones for, for the user and the bigger ones for the business as well. So what you see here is the difficulties in 
First is the difficulties to locate and accessing the right assets and the right funds when needed, especially that the risk of using unauthorized and out or outdated assets. This is also a huge risk if you are using something old. Uh, sometimes the machine is going to, 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 you will see some errors, some problems with that. This also can lead to use and legal uh, funds and legal assets, which uh, related to the licensing, uh, which is also a very, very important topic. And uh, collaboration, of course, you know, the user will have to work with, with, with his colleagues, with the IT team. So you will see a lot of ticketing, a lot of IT issues resulting again in delay and inconsistency. So for the business, these kind of problems can bring more. Uh, as you know, you the, probably the majority of you are in the business and 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 managing this kind of of um, um, I would say of, of outcome from using assets. Disor disorganized asset management across all the platforms. If if example if they are using a dam or if 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 you are using example Adobe, if you, if you have internal hard drive. Uh, or a server, maybe you will see a mess if you are not organized. Of course, it depends on the size of of, of the files and the fonts you have, but but definitely you will see uh, disorganized um, workflow. The second thing is increase of of the the, the um, violation of the licensing. This is also important because uh, the majority of the licensing issues happen uh, when uh, there is there is uh, uh, disorganization on on or you or the user is simply is not organized enough to identify the 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 fonts that is not licensed or a font or asset that need attention so some 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 fonts or some assets need attention by licensing or maybe uh, um, EULA or the policy or the right to use so this kind of, of, of stuff need really attention. And if you are not organized, you will not be able to, um, uh, to identify that. And uh, the same thing for the business as well is the communication and the coordination between the members, uh, especially the management and the users. This also can, can cause a lot of uh, productivity issues, tracking, tracking what the users they are doing uh, and this is going to reflect the numbers. I mean, any business, the first or the first focus is uh, is the revenue, and this is going to impact that. So, as a conclusion, with multi creative and assets uh, elements around 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 the user, there is a lot of risks, and there is this introduced basically risks and can really create. Uh, low quality work and predictable timelines and customer uh, customer dissatisfaction and legal problems um, and and more and um, asset or font management solution uh, will make sure that this kind of risks this kind of errors this kind of problems uh, are controlled and are less uh, by reducing the risk of, 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 of the consequences. So what we are offering is um, Connect. So Extensus Connect, this is Extensus solution, uh, the product called Connect. There is uh, one product offering uh, in, in two tiers or sold in two tiers. There, there is Connect and Connect Insight. Uh, Connect is cloud-based. Uh, and his asset workflow. This is around fonts and assets. When I say assets, I'm talking about images, videos, documents, um, everything. I, I think the majority of, of, of uh, we support the majority of the files, formats. Um, but to, just to give you a highlight or, or high level um, key, key features or key um, options I was, or actions that, that the user will be able to do. And this will include uploading assets on fonts, access to all the fonts, access to all assets in one platform, simplify and organize these assets by libraries, by groups, um, search and smart search and editing, 
this is this is also um, good for very good for the creative end with uh, for uh, for the clients with 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 a lot of or the users with a lot of funds uh, and a lot of assets uh, sharing these assets and the funds in one platform uh, eliminating the manual work or the need of manual transfer and version version issues as you know I work today on on a file tomorrow my colleague is going to update that file so which is the old one which is the new one so this kind of confusion um, uh, connect will be able to remove that so streamlines the creative process so you will be able to see you know uh, enhance the productivity ensure that smooth transition from assets creation to the final stage which is the production um, there is also the licensing tracking and insights reporting this is also important for for the business generally and uh, risk reduction on and efficiency improvement so by reducing the risk of using example font license uh, unlicensed font unlicensed uh, the document or template or design this is going of course to reduce any legal problems uh, that 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 you could face uh, and at the end we also have uh, storage so connect is also offering storage and we are go we are going to talk in details about about what storage options we have um for insight the, the the business is going to be able to answer these kind of questions uh, we believe that that we heard a lot of this of this kind of questions um example who added these assets to the collection what is the value of these assets where was the asset used what did we pay for this asset this is very important information because at some point you want to know how much money you are investing in your funds, in your assets. So you will not be able to know exactly how much, example, during a quarter or, or, or a year or a month, how much money you gave your users uh, as resources. And these resources, again, can be designed, can be template, can be uh, uh funds because you, as you know funds they have subscription annual subscription or monthly subscription and the same for the assets so you are investing money but you 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 cannot really know uh what is the value of that money so uh connect insight is going to answer that kind of question so you will you will know how much money you did spend last year last quarter last project do we really own these assets do you is this assets properly licensed? And this is the kind of, of, of insights and reporting that Connect Insight is going to, 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 to offer. Um, again, Chris is going to, to show you a little bit how, how that is, is going to look like in, in, in Connect um, or Connect Insights. And also for the creative workflow, um, how much time you are spending on the phase of project example, from the pitch, you know, from the pitch until the production, there is, of course, every 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 client has a different different process or production process. So, uh, insight is going to give you, you know, an estimation or or more than estimation actually is precise um, time spent on 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 that process and um, and by force or the goal of it also is to track what the freelancers example they are doing with their time and they and they work so you will see, you will be able to track the freelancing the most you know efficient during their asset creation phase you will know what they are doing which fund they are using which asset they are using which which the funds they are used the most is this project ready to go so there is actually a lot of questions that connect insight is going to answer through reporting and through workflow improvement um, and the goal again, the goal is is to control uh, not only the assets but also the users' um, uh, workflow. I mean, results what they are what they are bringing to the business. So you will be able to know uh, from the, from they start until the end what funds they used, assets, uh, and also the health of of the of the assets you have. Um, so just this is just to give you. Uh, the top or the high the high level um features that that are let's say 
values that that insight is going to offer uh we have auditing as you know health healthy um uh, healthy funds or healthy assets need to be audited and the connecting side is going to enable you to audit and track who added the assets who added the funds to the collections uh provide um transparency and uh, and also allowing the agencies to maintain that healthy organized funds and assets collections we also have assets um value assessment so this is going to help you to determine the value and the assets by tracking the purchase and the renewal information this is also important when you buy it you will be able to see at the same time i i have this fund or i have these assets it's going to expire in example in six months and they paid this amount of money for it. And this is the person who track it, who, who will be in charge of renewing it. Um, we also have the uh, usage tracking. So this provide where the assets has been used the most. Example, if you buy, let's say 10 funds and you pay an example, a thousand every, every year, and you only know that only from these 10 funds, only two funds, they are used the most. So, you will be asking yourself the question why I have to renew the, the rest of, 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 of the funds if only two I bought that they are in use. So connecting site is going to give you that 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 tool to understand better your your funds and your assets and who, who is using them to avoid of course um, paying more than 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 you should. Uh, and this is going to the cost tracking. So it will allow you to track the expenses associated with each asset, including the purchase price and the renewal fees, uh, and also analyzing you know, the total cost of, of your investment in these assets. And finally, we have the licensing, which I think this is um, very important, um, which is identify the assets that require periodic license. I mean, example, you have to buy a license every every year or every six months or something like that. It depends on the on the funds or the assets um, value and and EULA or policy or the foundry who, who's selling it. And uh, and this again is to reduce the risk uh, of working uh, with expired uh, funds or unlicensed uh, funds or assets, which can cause uh, serious legal issues. Um, so this is basically the top uh, or the high high level um, values that 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 Connect Insight is going is going to offer. Um, what you see here is this 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 very brief or small uh, uh, table where you can see comparison between the two. So we have uh, Connect, which is going to include fonts management, asset management with the hundred gigabyte uh, storage per user shared means that if you have example you have a team of 10 of 10 users you will have uh 100 gigabyte per user uh shared between all of them so so they can use it and uh you do have the access of, of course to the font management to the liam library basic font reporting sso you you will have the asset editing team tagging and all that um and also we do have connect insight which is fonts assets and insight plus one terabyte uh per user so if you have example team of 20 20 users you will be having 20 terabyte as as storage and you will have access to almost everything um and uh i will directly jump to the demo i think the best the best to 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 uh to recap what i was saying is um is uh to see it how how it's look like uh, and we are really excited to show you that. And uh, in between, don't hesitate if you still have any questions or you do have any questions, uh, let, a, let, let us know at the end. Um, Chris, it's all to you. Thank you, Hakeem. Uh, so, yep, if you stop sharing your screen, I should be able to share mine. Okay. So here we are uh, online uh, looking at connect.extensis.com. So being a, a single platform for all customers, you would go to the Connect website and log in with your uh, email address. 
And obviously what you then get access to comes down to whether you're an administrator of, of the account or whether you're just a user who's been assigned access. We do have uh, integration with uh, authentication services, though, uh, so that you can have to uh, sign in multiple, uh, well, do single sign on basically using uh, things like uh, your Microsoft login, if that's what you want to do. But otherwise, you can let it remember who you are. And so I just put in my email address, click login. As you saw, I didn't have to type in and remember my password because I've already done all that. And that's the sort of single sign on uh, access to connect. Now, you probably may already be familiar with this sort of interface of uh, connect fonts. And this is where just the most customers generally will start from is from knowing extensive for font management and looking to have a centralized font management solution. So this is where if you're just working for yourself, then you'd have your personal libraries and areas where you organize fonts. But once you're part of a team and you need to have shared access to the same fonts and the same content, that's where then you would build up your team libraries. You still have sets that you can create within each library to organize fonts based on different projects or different collections and so on. And how exactly you organize the fonts will come down to your specific workflow. But otherwise, this will be very familiar to those of you who are familiar with our desktop application. You've got the same sort of thing up here of your libraries, just as you have here within the web browser. The one slight difference is just in how it looks for previewing, but we do offer various options similar to in the desktop. So you can increase the point size on the previews, decrease it. You can put in your own headline and compare uh, and just yeah, see how the fonts look. And there's also the option to group fonts by family so that you're not looking at each individual weight separately of bold versus regular. You can group the fonts together so that all the styles are grouped together under one umbrella and if you prefer more like that desktop client a list style view then that's also available as well so different interfaces you can even make specific selections and split the view and then you can see how it really looks like what you're familiar with from that desktop where you've got all the font information below and the previews above and you can quickly and easily make your own selections to preview those particular fonts all together in one place. And if you're grouping by family, you can expand, expand out the family to see the individual weights. But the advantage of grouping by family is that I can turn on the whole family of three weights in a single click. So you've still got buttons to activate uh, the fonts as, as you wish. That's the basics of, of font. But what Connect as a platform offers you is the ability to extend beyond just the font management and activation uh, and to also include assets. And this asset area along similar lines lets you literally upload files by just say grabbing a folder and just drag and drop. Uh, but save time is one I added earlier. So you can see it will maintain the same folder structure. And this can be leveraged to either work on organizing your project files or even just managing, say, a stock photo collection. So if you're wanting to make it quick and easy to search for images for use in your layouts and projects, then you can store those in, in Connect. Uh, but if you're also looking at more the design workflow, that's where yeah, you can also go in and start uh, including things like your particular branding files. So your logos, your templates, or even just your particular files that you're working on right now so a particular indesign file what connect assets though really helps with is several things it helps with organizing it helps with searching because every asset that's brought in uh, it can be tagged with description data 
or with additional tags that you add. This is flows through from whatever tags and so on you might be adding in your applications in Adobe. Uh, so for example, if you go into a PDF and add keywords in the PDF, they will just be extracted automatically here. But also we rely on artificial intelligence to add these smart tags as well, so that you can quickly and easily click on any of these to search for other, say, booklets using AI for, for identifying them. Those of you who are observant, they will also notice at the bottom, we also, though, because we do the font management, can also show you which fonts are in use in each document as well. And where you do perhaps potentially have some problem files where they may have within them PostScript fonts, this is where those would be identified separately with a little PostScript icon. And therefore, if you're doing any kind of workflow to replace those PostScript fonts, it's very quick and easy to find when you need to replace a font what documents are affected by this font. So say I want to replace this PostScript Euro style with an open type Euro style. I can just click on it to see and search for all the documents that I've got that use that font. In my case, it's just the one, but you get the picture. So similarly, when I'm over here, I can just click on any, any document and search on the font to find the multiple files that use that font. So you've got this nice combination between fonts and assets and that searching flows across as well on the font side so that when you're looking at a font you can see there's the option to tag a font as well. You can also go in and view more information on the font as well. If I just switch back to the tile view you can see that I can see various bits of information. And again, it includes artificial intelligence smart tags, so that if I know I'm looking for, say, something for a headline, I can run a search on this AI smart tag to find all my headline suitable fonts without me necessarily having to tag a particular tag to them all. But that is still available if you want to add your own tags, say a project number or a client name, However you organize, those tags can be added, and that is then all searchable. So I can search across all fonts, across all the metadata, or I can be very specific about what I'm trying to search on, whether I'm searching for a particular classification, a particular font type or style, or I'm searching my own tags or those AI smart tags. So just quick and easy searching, allowing me to get straight to the fonts I want to use. Uh, when I want to use them. Once I have my fonts available, I can just yeah, activate them, go to my application and use them. But of course, often you're going to your application because you're opening a document and connect again makes it quick and easy to do that. Whereas with a lot of cloud storage solutions, you have to download a file to your desktop, say, or get a local synced copy and then you open that and then once you save it, you have to wait for it to sync back to the cloud. With Connect, we do it all automatically without that separate need to download and re-upload. You can literally just select an asset, click to edit, that will launch your application for that asset type. So if this is an InDesign file, actually this is an Illustrator document, it would launch Illustrator when I click to edit without me having to separately make a copy of the file to my machine. That all just happens in the background. The file gets downloaded from the cloud, opened into your application. You just work on it. You click save. And when you save it, it automatically gets saved back up into Connect in the cloud. And that's where, as Hakeem was saying, when you've got multiple people working on files and so on, uh, it will prompt me if someone already has a file open and just uh, ensures that therefore you don't get two people trying to work on the same file at the same time with one user's edits overwriting another. But just making it quick and easy to get at your files. And that's generally the basics, though, obviously, the once you've got the files in there, you've got options to convert them, resize them, because say you only need a low res image for, say, Facebook rather than the high res that you're putting into Connect, or you want to just share with your client, this is what we've created so far, I can just select the particular files, click to share, 
get it to generate the link. I can then email that link to someone who doesn't have Connect and they can just click on it and see that set of files with the option to download. And, and obviously then they can open into their application and so on. So quick and easy sharing of assets straight out of your Connect with your clients and so on. So that's the general platform, as we call it, with Connect, that you've got the font management, but you can tie on to that the asset management with the 100 gig of storage. But where the real power can come in is with adding on Connect with Insight. So what exactly is Insight? Well, Insight is enhanced tools. You've seen elements of some of that with the edit here, but I'll show you a couple more in a moment. Uh, but enhanced tools and enhanced analytics. So if you go into the administration area, assuming you, of course, that you are an administrator, not just a, a, a read-only user, uh, then you can go to this analytics section. The analytics section will offer you when you have connect with insight additional information to help you track things in your workflow for very specific issues and workflow problems that we're looking to help you resolve uh, the example i'm going to show today but obviously this is constantly evolving with new workflows new things coming in the future as well uh, but we'll talk a little bit about licensing as another thing that, that, that's available but uh, what i'm going to show today is uh, helping you with font replacement whether that's just replacing fonts generally in a document to swap font A with font B, or the more specific issue of where you're using and have postscript fonts in your collection. Obviously, you may or may not be aware, but hopefully you are aware that Adobe, with the latest versions of its applications, has ended support for postscript fonts in those applications, meaning that if you update and you then open an old job that used postscript fonts, you're going to get missing font warnings. Now, the first bit of analytics that you can see that we've got available to you is simply to help an administrator know if users are still activating and using PostScript fonts in the workflow. Obviously, I haven't, as you can see, because it says uh, <laughs> the report's empty. So results are only available if people activate PostScript fonts within the last 30 days. But an administrator can keep an eye on things to know whether or not people are still using PostScript fonts. You can also see how much of your font collection is PostScript fonts. So again, uh, one way that a lot of customers solve this problem is to just remove the PostScript fonts from the libraries so that users aren't still using them going forwards. That would help ensure that this font's not reporting still active use of PostScript fonts. But of course, that doesn't solve the problem of still getting the missing font warnings and interrupting the designers who are working in jobs because every time they open a file that's used PostScript fonts already, they're going to start getting missing font warnings, uh, which is going to interrupt them whilst they work out what, what on earth do I do now? Uh, how, how do I replace this font and so on? So with that in mind, Connect with Insight offers this additional analytics that you can see here with this report for files with PostScript fonts. You already saw earlier how when I open an asset, Connect identifies which fonts that asset is using, and it identifies which fonts are PostScript fonts. Automatically, you just add the files into Connect. It does that analysis for you. You don't have to go through all your files one by one to open them to see do they have PostScript fonts or not. Just put them in Connect. It will tell you. And it will tell you, therefore, what percentage of your files are impacted and how many files that actually is in terms of number that contain PostScript fonts. And the workflow then that can come from this with Insight is that administrators can then go through and start marking these particular assets as files they want to be fixed. They can view the asset if they wish to, to get an understanding of which fonts it's using and so on. And they can also help the users, though not all administrators know about fonts, and so sometimes it's down to the users to make these choices. But an administrator can come in and make what we call font replacement suggestions. This is where you can select one of the PostScript fonts that's in use in the document, like this, say, a body MT, and then they can go and search the font collection for a suitable replacement. 
Now, it could be that you search on a baddie, you don't find anything, so maybe I don't have a suitable replacement with the same name, which is what we would usually recommend. And that's where then, therefore, you will have to start looking into using some of the other features that we offer around things like uh, Quick matching, if I just uh, quickly bring up the font information panel here, quick matching to look for similar shaped fonts that could be suitable replacements for this particular font and so on. Uh, and you can then search for that font, add it in as a replacement suggestion. And so similarly, here's the one I did earlier for Euro style, where you can see I'm going to replace the Euro style postscript with a Euro style standard open type font from liner type, that's what the LT in the middle means. So I can make that suggestion and that then flows through to end users who are doing the work to actually edit the files and swap out the font. And when you're in the report, you just mark all the documents that you want fixing as to fix, that then flows through to the users who are back here in Connect Assets. They will then get this new insight to the assets area we're showing the PostScript files that need fixing, the files that have PostScript fonts that need fixing. I can click on that and you can see it's got the same 17. I can see the icon with the font replacement suggestion. So I know that my administrator has already marked this file with some suggestions. I can just click on it to see what those suggestions are, as well as obviously looking at the more information to understand how many PostScript fonts are in the document and so on. But what I can do is if I want to actually solve the problem, I can go in, tag this file as in progress because I'm going to work it. That helps all the other users know that this one's already being worked on. So again, we're not in the situation where multiple people all start trying to work on the same file. Uh, if I do hit a problem, because maybe there are no suitable replacements for the font uh, and no suggestions have been made, I could just throw it back to the administrator by marking it as blocked. That then will feed through back to the report here instantly so that the administrator will know it's blocked. And we are also offering uh, uh, notifications for that uh, in-app uh, notifications so that you can know when a new file has been marked as blocked and so on and, and can go in to look to see what the issue is. Obviously, maybe the issue is no suitable replacements. So that's when it's then down to the administrator to maybe look at the replacement suggestions. Note that there is no suitable replacement for that about EMT. Maybe I therefore go out, license a, a suitable option that we can then use to swap that font out for. Or maybe it's a case that actually, no, we're not. This is a really old legacy project file. We don't really need to fix it, but at least we, we had a look at it and, and we know that, yeah, it, it's it's got a problem. But I can mark it as ignore. If I mark it as ignore, it will remove it from the list of files to be fixed for the end user back in Connect Assets. But if I do find a suitable replacement font, I can just re-tag it back to be fixed again with the additional font replacement suggestions made. And then my end user can come back and go in, mark it as in progress, click to edit it. And when you do swap out all the PostScript fonts, it will automatically replace this drop down here with just the word fixed. Once there are no more PostScript fonts in the document, it'll just show as fixed. And it hangs around showing as fixed for, for something like a couple of weeks, just so that you can track the progress as you're going. But that's where, again, you come back to your reports in the analytics. You'll start to see this bar filling up as files are getting fixed by your users. So really great additional tools to help you understand what's the scale of the problem, how many files do we need to fix? What's the current situation with each individual document? Has it been fixed or not? Is it in progress? How are my users doing with their progress? I can keep an eye on things and obviously get to the final result that you want, which is every file either fixed or ignored. Separate to that, as I mentioned earlier, though, we're adding more and more analytics and more and more insights all the time. Another area that is being expanded upon as we speak is the font licensing area. 
This is a big area of risk to our customers. If fonts are used where there isn't a license or a font license is about to expire, you need to know these things. And it all starts, therefore, with adding in your font license information by clicking new license and filling in the details. Obviously, this is a bit of a manual process, but typically you, most customers either have someone who's, whose role is in the finance department or whatever to uh, go out and place the purchase orders, buy the fonts, and has the paperwork to add the font license information, and generally wants a place to store it. And what can be better than storing that font license information in a product where you can associate it directly to the fonts? Obviously, it won't let me click that right now until I create and save the license. But if I go back to... Uh, the one I created earlier, you can see how you can then associate which fonts are covered by this license. So 12 fonts within two families are covered by this particular license. And that then will flow through to all the additional insight where if your users start activating fonts and start using those fonts, then you can get the bigger picture for where there's the risk to your business and cost to your business around font licensing. So that includes things like how many fonts do we have installed on how many systems, how many libraries, and how many of those fonts have been unused in the last 90 days. And therefore, it's like, why are we licensing for so many fonts if no one's using them? That's one example where you could have a cost saving, stop over licensing of fonts. Another area can be the actual compliance. You know how many libraries you have with all the fonts in and how many systems they're going on, but maybe you're not all the fonts are not licensed. So you have some risk with fonts that are unlicensed. We need to bring that down and get rid of those unlicensed fonts. We need to make sure that the licensed fonts are not going out of compliance where we've installed them on more systems than we have bought licenses. And also fonts that may be getting close to full on their license and could be therefore at risk or fonts that are getting too close to expiring soon and need to be renewed if we want to keep using them and so on versus fonts that have actually an expired license and yet people are still activating them and so on. Alongside other activity around your users, so you license our software, that has a cost to it for so many users, but if you've got users who are not ever launching the client and logging in and working on files and using the font management, you're potentially wasting money if, the, if you've got inactive users. So being able to monitor and track and have those analytics to know what's going on alongside the earlier mentioned PostScript fonts issue. That's all stuff that's being worked on as we speak. We'll be launching soon and just gives you that extra level on top of the general platform of, of management. So I hope that's been helpful, a, a, a nice quick overview of what Connect as a platform provides and what adding on the insight option also give you. And as I say, being a software as a service in the cloud, it's not that this is the end, it's going to be constantly evolving, adding new functions, adding new features, and all based off customer feedback and what's happening in the industry and so on, and all the sort of issues and problems that come up. Because obviously things like the PostScript thing, that's only been happening since around January when Adobe ended the support uh, this year, uh, though obviously they announced it at January of last year, so they gave people a year to try and plan for it and, and so on. But as you can see, we, we're, we're staying on top of things to try to keep the product relevant and up to date with what are the latest issues and the feedback that we get from customers as to what their biggest issues are. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Chris and uh, Hakim, uh, to tell everything about Extensive Suitcase. Thank you very much for that. Um,
at this moment, we didn't receive any questions. So uh, to the participants um, who has uh, still some questions, just uh, put your question in our Q&A box and then we uh, pick this up live uh, in this webinar. Um, but maybe I still can continue with Story of Lab 9. So if you have any uh, questions about subscription uh, license uh, for suitcase, uh, just contact our sales team um, and then you can so just uh, fill in our contact form on our website or just sending an email to info at lab9pro.be and then we send you all the information and uh, pricing for this uh, licenses uh, for your company as well for the um, turnout of, of the postscript uh, funds as well we can help with that also with training and uh, extra uh, expertise uh, from our uh, training uh, team uh, from lab9 academy they can help you as well uh, for that um I see there aren't questions. So I think Chris and Hakim, everything is clear uh, of the presentation. Um, if we, if you have still some question after this webinar, you can of course send us an email uh, with your question and then we can uh, send this uh, to uh, Hakim and Chris. I think that would be a problem for them uh, to answer the questions, um, question uh, by an email. Um, and so I think we're gonna, end this webinar, uh, I think. Um, Chris, uh, Hakim, and also Walter, um, I would uh, like to thank you uh, for this webinar. Thanks you very, thank you very much for your expertise and presentation today. Um, and like I said in the beginning, I will put the recording on our YouTube channel of Lightman Pro. You will receive this afternoon the recording link as well, um, also with some extra information about um, the software and then uh, we can move on with that, okay? Great, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dino. Thank you, uh, Walter, Chris, and uh, and a huge thanks to everybody who joined. And uh, hopefully, we 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 hear from you soon. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Bye. I wish everyone a lovely day, and uh, we see you soon. Bye bye. Bye.